Hello everyone and welcome to Wild Olive Tree. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit and the precept that we're going to address today, God sets rulers on earth. Sisters and brothers, whether or not we vote and the overall end scheme really doesn't matter because the Lord is going to put the heart or is going to sway the heart the way he wants it to move in the elected officials and he's going to put in office who he wants to. Now I'm not saying don't vote because the Lord did give us free will and we can vote who we want into office but once we get because of our own lust the candidate into office the ones that are even running for office and have a shot at it have already been set up by the Lord. We don't just choose anybody we want to choose. Everything that happens in this physical realm on earth is either the Lord has done it or he allows it. So let's start this off in Romans, the 13th chapter, and we're going to show you that God sets rulers on earth, and we're going to show you a little bit about why he does and how he does. Romans 13, and let's pick it up at verse 1, brother, 13 and 1. Whenever you're ready, brother Mike, let's start off this lesson. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained or, or, or are ordained of God. There is no power but of God, and the powers that be are ordained by God. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So when you've got an elected official mm -hmm. and they lay down a law and you say, Skip you, I'm not doing it, you're spitting in God's eye, according to the scripture. Go ahead, brother. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to do evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Uh -huh. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. So the rulers are not a terror to do good, to, are not a terror to good works, but to evil works. They're elected to govern us, to keep us safe, to keep us at peace, to have a peaceful existence. Go ahead, brother. Four. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. Because the ruler is a minister of God to you for good. A minister of God you're going to kick at by disobeying? Go ahead, brother. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Uh -huh. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Step out of line the wrong way, you're going to find yourself in prison. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Wherefore, ye, ye, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. So you need to be subject unto those elected officials, not only for wrath, for when people step out of line, but for conscience sake, for doing the things that are right. Let's go to Psalm, the 75th chapter. Psalm 75. Psalm 75. And let's pick it up at verse 5, brother. 5 through 7, brother, whenever you're ready. Lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. Uh -huh. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. So, you know, you, you're prospering in life or whatever, and you're getting elected to, to look over certain things and everything. Don't do it with a bunch of false pride, because it ain't you that's doing it. Go ahead, brother. 7. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. See, if you're in an elected pos uh, position and you're an elected official, first of all, you better be doing it righteously, and that's few and far in between, because the Lord, when he set up rulers like kings, he told them to write a copy of the uh, law, write a copy of the book of the law, so that they can use it to govern themselves and the people. So the Lord sets up who he sets up, he put it down one and he sets up another. And he'll tear you down if you're not a righteous ruler. Let's go to Daniel, the second chapter. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're not dealing with how to be an elected official. We're dealing with how we're supposed to act being subservient to them. Daniel 2, and pick it up at verse 20, brother. 2 and 20. Go ahead. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Uh-huh. And he changed the times and the season. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understand. Yes, sir. He changes. God changes times and seasons. He removes kings. He sets up key, kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. Everything comes from God. Even our elected officials. Right. Daniel, the fourth chapter, brother, one verse, verse 17. 
This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the, the, the man by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. And the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men even after Israel told Jesus he didn't, they didn't want him for their king. He still rules in the kingdom of men. Go ahead. And giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. Basis is vulgar men yes. without moral principles. Yep. Let's go to John, the 19th chapter. Gospel of John, the 19th chapter. John 19. And brother, we're going to start this at verse 9. We're going to read 9 through 11. Go ahead, brother. And when he and went again into the judgment hall and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. So this is Pilate. He's a Roman ruler. And he's there ruling in Jerusalem. And he's got Jesus and he's questioning him. And most certainly, Jesus is a slave in bindings, if you will. And this is a ruler talking to Jesus. So he's ruling over Jesus, right? Let's find out what Jesus says. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Pilate's telling Jesus, dude, I can save your life or I can kill you. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you talking to me? And look what Jesus says. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Except it were given thee from above. And everything we've been reading, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, says God sets up rulers. Amen. Go ahead. Therefore, he that delivereth me unto thee has the greater sin. Let's go to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew 28. Brother, we're going to read one verse. Verse 18. Matthew 28. And verse 18, who is it that sets up kings? We know Jesus is the God of the Bible, but who is it that sets up kings? Go ahead, brother. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And he gave it to Satan. He gave power to Satan. Mm -hmm. Let's go to 1 Timothy, the second chapter. 1 Timothy, the second chapter. 1 Peter. I mean 1 Peter, I'm sorry. 1 Peter, the second chapter. 1 Peter, the second chapter. And brother, we're going to read 13 and 14. Go ahead, brother. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme. So this is for the Lord's sake, for obedience to him, whether it's the king as supreme or the president. Go ahead. Or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers for, and for the praise of them that do well. Or unto governors. Those are the... Not just governors of the states, but that's governors, mayors, aldermen, precinct captains. They are um, neighborhood watches mm -hmm. that are trying to keep neighborhoods safe, whatever. Yep. Let's go to 1 Timothy, the second chapter. 1 Timothy, the second chapter. 1 Timothy 2. Brother, we're going to read 1 through 3. Whenever you get there, brother. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And we do that in our morning prayer and meditation or our evening prayer and meditation or when we're praying throughout the day. We're always praying for the other saints and making intercessory prayers and whatnot. Go ahead, brother. Two, for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And we're supposed to be praying for kings or presidents or leaders and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. And this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. I'm guilty. Sometimes dealing with some of these elected officials... I forget, and I, instead of being a little rough and, and, and with an attitude, I need to take a step back and take them more to prayer like I'm not doing. Believe me, sisters and brothers, when we put together lessons like this, we get convicted before we teach it. If we're stepping outside the boundaries of this book, and then we correct ourselves and we move forward. Yeah. But that's for another time. Proverbs, the 21st chapter. Proverbs 21, we're going to end it in Proverbs. We've got this in one more place. Proverbs 21, Proverbs 21, 
Why are we supposed to be praying for all these elected officials? 21 and 1, brother, go ahead. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithsoever he will. The Lord's will can be swayed by righteous men's prayers. We're supposed to be praying for our elected officials. Yes. If they're stepping outside the boundaries of God's commandments and starting to cause some discord within the community, we're supposed to be taking it to prayer so the Lord could sway their hearts. Last place, the 29th Proverbs, uh, chapter of Proverbs. Proverbs 29 and verse 2. Go ahead, brother. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. That's why we're supposed to be constantly taking it to prayer. Because our duty is to obey every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And as we just showed you, God sets up all rulers on earth. And God commands us to be obedient to them. So, sisters and brothers, God sets rulers on this earth. As always, we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word and hope that you got something from these scriptures.